Right, uh, right. We, we had the TV reality and a chokehold for some years, almost a decade. It's been over a decade now that we've been on TV, but for a good decade, even, I mean, down to, you know, President Obama mentioning right. the show, like, it has definitely been um, something that has been very cultural for hip hop, for sure, and for black culture. Right, right, definitely. So being behind the scenes initially, and just in general, you know, have, being with the movers and the shakers and you being a mover and a shaker, is that something that you always wanted to kind of stay on the business side of things? Or were you more so open when the opportunity was presented to be in front of the camera? And now you're like really just huge, like you're a household name. People know who you are, you and your family and your story. I never, ever wanted to be in front of the camera. I, I came from um, a management background. At the time, I was managing at Violet and Management, mm -hmm. and um, I was working with Missy, I was working with Busta, 50, um, a bunch, of, and I loved being behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And then um, after the first season of Love and Hip Hop, we felt that there was there was something missing. There was, there was a, a character that was missing that really came up through the rings of hip hop Right. but that worked you know that wasn't attached to a man in hip-hop that was still you know a hip-hop baby or a hip-hop pioneer but not because of her so right. um well you know we interviewed a bunch of people and we thought about it then one day mona turns to me and says yindi i think you'd be great for it <laughs> and i was like mona i think you'd be great for it because i was like no I'm like, Mona, I don't do my hair. I don't wear makeup. I, I was like, I barely dress right. Absolutely right. not. And she's like, we can work on all that. You'll be fine. Uh -huh. And her with the woman that was my assistant at the time, who now turned into my manager, um, they're like, you can do this. You, you'll be fine. You can do this. Everything that we're looking for, you embody that person. Get in front of the camera. Right. And I was like, so I was like, listen, if I come in front of this camera, I'm only coming for business. Right. I'm not bringing no love. I'm not bringing no relationship. At yeah. the time, I didn't have any kids. Right. So I was like, I'm only coming on as a manager. I'm right. only going to manage Jim on this show. That right. is it. Don't ask me about nothing I got going on personally. Right. right. I'm like, 15 years later, we all up in my business. My <laughs> <laughs> story is so unique. And I think, I think I'm a product of a blended family and now I have a blended family. And I think how seeing that story evolve over all these years, now everybody is like, from what we watch, everybody, you know, everything is good. Everything is, is, is like on a good level. I think that gives encouragement to those like myself and many others of, you know, it's not going to always be easy. Things yeah. Happen, but you know, it's, it's about the fight. You know exactly. I mean? Exactly. For sure. I think, I think it's just real. I know people always think that reality is scripted or um, you, it's situational for sure. And I will not take that away. Would I normally be in the middle of my day at lunch with, you know, random women that I'm not necessarily close with? No, I'm busy. I ain't got time. I got kids. I got businesses. Right. No. Right. So you're, you're definitely put in these situations that you would normally be like, okay, let me go work. Let me go to work. Right. Right. However, what happens in those situations and situations within your real life and your family, those are real. Like I'm really here. I'm really in this family life. I'm really doing it. So that was a situation in real life that happened with my real family. Right. You know, and I think that so many of us are trying to navigate and figure out these blended families. You have past relationship hurts. You have past trauma. You got all kinds of things you're dealing with. This one didn't do this right. I don't like the way this one spoke to me. And now here you come trying to say how this one needs to speak to me. It, it's hard. It's yeah. hard navigating, you know, just with me and my husband. Then you have to also navigate with past relationships and their children that are involved. It's all hard. Yeah. And I think it's important to first, what we what we realize in time is putting children first. Right. And when you love someone's child, you love or you try to love all that comes with them. Right. And that is embracing the struggle, but wanting to see the end of the tunnel. And right. I think for me, I... I for, for some time, I got lost of what is the end goal here? Right. And if the end goal is for us to be able to raise this child together mm -hmm. in love, then I have to be loving to that child's mother. I have to be at least decent. Right. You know? Right. You know what? I really appreciate you and Little Mendici's relationship. Like, you know, like I said, I'm a viewer. I'm a watcher. I'm, I'm watching every week, okay? <laughs> and I just feel like it's so unique um, how it's just, it's like it's like a real love there you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? and we're not sure. there to see okay was there ever any sort of like difficulty with him or anything but from what 
I've seen over the years, it seems like he has a real like solid respect for you, like a real like love, like uh, another mother, like, mm -hmm. you know, my, this is my other mom, you know, I have my mom and you know, this is another mom that I have as well. How, how has that relationship evolved? It's beautiful. It, it's, um, he's such a gift. He's such a gift to me. And I think, um, contrary to what my husband may think, mm -hmm. um, a lot of me falling in love with Mendisi was because of the way that I saw him father his child yeah. and the relationship that I built with him and his, ch his baby boy. Right. Um, they became my family. They became my right and my left hip. And I, it's such a gift. I can't even, I can't tell you like, ooh, it was hard raising that one. Oh, that baby did, that boy didn't know. Yeah. That boy there taught was my first entrance into motherhood. Right. And it was beautiful. Always had utmost respect. Always a beautiful child. He's an adult now, and he's a beautiful human being, even, even as an adult. Right. He's such a tremendous help with his brother and his sisters, right. his brothers and sister. Um, and it's, it, it's fun to watch him grow up. It's not fun, all the pranks. Mm -hmm. Those not fun um and every day we're like where the camera we're right. looking, lifting up jackets like you got a camera stop playing with us right but ultimately it, it's such a beautiful love story to have watched him grow up and um, i'm so proud of the way his father has been instrumental in his life i'm proud of learning how to mother through him mm -hmm. um and then i'm also even proud of the relationship that i have with his mom yes Yes, yes, and that's major, and that's for like, sure, for I sure. Like, I think it was maybe an episode or two ago when you were dancing and all mm -hmm. that. Like, wow, man. goals, girl, goals. Because I remember, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, girl, we all remember situation. <laughs> and again, that was like you know, I can't. I wish I could tell you that it was scripted. I wish I could tell you that you know it's not something that I'm like this. When whenever like people like I was watching old episodes and and I'm like, oh, don't tag me in that. Yeah. You know, they're just like in real life moments. We all have moments of things that we would love to keep in the closet. We have things that we would love to bury for no one to see. Yeah. But I signed on the dotted line to have parts of my life on TV. Right. So as much as I want to. okay so as much as i want to i can't yeah. you know i i can't shy away from it and i have to i have to definitely definitely that's what happens when y'all are boss man they they call in they need her they need her okay right and the crazy thing is this is my this is my banker hey i'm sorry i'm doing an interview i'm gonna call you right back okay bye yeah, yeah. Definitely. He's like, I'm gonna call. If I don't get on one phone, I'm gonna call another phone. And they just would pick. Like, I'm like, give me one second. Right, I understand that. So, um, shifting back into the music thing, just briefly, um, what are your thoughts about like the major labels and like kind of like the cutting of the A and R's and like middlemen and things of that nature? Do you still feel like that is necessary because they're kind of transitioning to like AI type of things? Or yeah, you know, artist development is so important, and I think that right now, where they're one. I spend money is is with what's selling and a lot of the artists that are out right now have no artist development yeah. they don't have a lot of training when it comes to having longevity in this business mm -hmm. they got a hot song they got a hot gimmick and we buy it right and we buy it and then we buy it but how long are we creating you know are we creating chris browns are we creating whitney houston's are we creating buster ron's are we creating missy elliott's mm -hmm. are we really creating artists that have extensive training extensive artist repertoire and development where they know like you gotta make music that stands past the test of time right. you gotta have a brand that if you decide I no longer want to do music. Can you get into the restaurant business? Can you get into producing? Can you get into songwriting? Will people respect your artistry? Right. Or are you just who you are right now because you got some hot records and then that's it. We're done with you. Because you don't you don't have any longevity. You haven't really been properly taught or developed in this business. Mm -hmm. Like I remember when I was in the music business, even when I was an intern, I remember there was a particular artist that I was working with, everything down to her hairstyle. Mm -hmm was premeditated right we want your hair more like this mm -hmm. we want you we, this is this is the, the the brand guy this is how we want you to dress 
Right. This is how we want your hair to be. This is how we want you to walk into rooms. When you get on the mic, this is what you say. When you leave the stage, this is what you say. Mm -hmm. Every single aspect of who that artist was, was properly primed and, and put in a package. Right. And that's what was sold. Right. Like, I think with reality TV, like even when, um, you know, everyone had their image of like, let's say a Whitney Houston, right? When we saw this beautiful package and, and such a beautiful human being and artist, right? And then when we saw the reality show and it was a real person like that, that went through the things we went through, that had the same kind of, you know, raising her kids, like we raise our kids, right. um, going through relationship stuff on TV, everyone was like, oh my gosh, she's a real person. Yes, yeah. we are real people. But what happened before reality TV, you bought into this package. Right. You bought into who these people were on the stage, you know, this, this, epitome of perfection this exactly. epitome of grace this epitome of all things pulled together and in real life nobody is like that right at all right. so then you're, you're in shock when you see this 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 real person come and i think that with with no longer having like artist development you just get that real person from the floor right and it's like you know you either buy into that or you don't right Right, right. And, that's it. and you know what's crazy? Like, like I, like I said, I love the culture. Me and my boyfriend, we we sit and we watch all the like the Jim Jones interviews and the Nori interviews and just all just the knowledge that they had back in the game about when they first came out. And it is crazy how you would hear them saying like, you know, there was like a strip of record labels and they would go to Rockefeller and go to this one and go to that one and and, and we're passing out mixtapes and we're doing this yes. and we're doing that. And now it's almost like just a click of a button. You upload a song and oh hey, you might make it. Yeah. You might blow up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think there are still artists that in their right that are are that are doing it just differently, but doing the same thing. They're doing local interviews. I was just in Philly. I hosted a voter fest um, with BET, and then this, there's this artist named Kerr. Mm -hmm. Now I'm from New York, but I'm living in Atlanta. I've never heard of Kerr, but when I tell you every single person in that audience knew every single word Kerr had to say, mm -hmm. which told me. Oh, he put in work in Philadelphia. Yeah. He must be at these radio stations. He must be at these clubs. He must be on the mic on these local news stations. He must be really putting in the work in his city. Right. And I think that's important too. Um, putting in the work on your in your local areas and your local clubs and your local radio stations um, when you're an artist that works too. So it's not necessarily just a click of a button because I think some of these artists are really putting in work. Think about Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke was huge in New York. Yes. You co come down to some of the like when I got to Atlanta, no one was really playing Pop Smoke. Yeah. But where I was at, he was on the radio all up and down. Everywhere okay. he was, he was a legend. He could walk into the club; it was legendary when he walked into the club. Everybody was going crazy. Right. Um, so I think some people put in work for sure where they're from, and I think that's a key to make sure where you're from, they know your your household name, right. and then from there, you know, you want to branch out to some of these other major markets, and then hopefully the little smaller markets will grab onto your music as well. Definitely, definitely. So um, I want to go into some voter registration because I really love how active you are everywhere, like everywhere, right? And I want to know um, when your husband was, um, you know, he, he went away and he, you know, did his time or whatever, was that what like struck your interest into like the judicial system and like, okay, something has to change, like what's going on? This is not right. It's inhumane. Because I remember you saying, one live or something it was like super cold in new york yes. outside let me tell you i'm gonna answer your question for sure but i was just talking to a friend of mine earlier today so mdc yeah. that's the prison that we were standing in front of and we for three days they had no they had for the for, for i don't know if it was for a few weeks they had no hot water they that's had no hot food MDC? yeah it was mdc oh. that is the same prison i believe where they're holding um, Diddy right. as well. But I remember standing in front of that prison. We said we will not go home until they put heat and hot water and hot food and blankets in this prison. It was below freezing. We were sleeping in our cars, myself, Until Freedom, Tamika Mallory, my son, Angelo, Jamila T. Davis, um, Linda Sarsour. We were out there and we were begging for representatives to come. Um, I remember Jumani um, was one of the representatives that, can you get me a charger, baby, so this phone doesn't die? 
um, for this one. Ask Amir for it. Um, I remember us standing there asking for artists, asking for influencers, people with voices to help us, to help these inmates. And yes, a lot of that, that wasn't the prison that my husband was in, but right. that was, I just felt like it could have been. Right. right. It right. could have been. And I can, I can reach this one. I can get here. This is in my backyard. Right. Um, and that, that is, we were like, we got it. And literally three days, it took us three days for them to get lights on, for them to get heat, and for them to get blankets and hot water. Three days in below legal, freezing though? weather. Yeah, how is that even legal though? Like how, like how is, I exactly. know they have to go away and do their time. Okay, I get that, respect that, right? But like, these it's are not still legal. legal though. Like, it's not legal, but the problem is so many of us, it doesn't affect us so we don't care. Right. And, and I have, I have, I cannot say that I was not that person. Right. Things that had no, no concern to me, I did not go hard for because it didn't affect me. When that joint came knocking on my back door, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. no, I, I'm, I'm not, I can't, I can't right. do it. Right. Somebody's brother's there, somebody's father's there. Some, and then that for, for a lot of people was a holding cell. There were people in there that were in there for unpaid child support. Mm -hmm. Like, you're gonna you're gonna die from being frozen because you 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 know, and they don't even know the verdict is still out if you didn't pay child support, right? It was there were so many people in there that were that's fine, baby. Give me the charger. Thank you, honey. Um, it it was just it was crazy. Right. I gotta shift because I don't want this phone to die. No, you're fine. That is crazy, but I just love how vocal you were. That I think yeah, that was it my was first insane. time when you like like active like that like it, what what really prompted you to really get involved in these sort of causes um i think again like you said when it came knocking on my back door it was like how can i not this right. is someone that i love this is someone that i have children with right um how can i not get involved you know what i'm saying and right. then also because because i got involved really on a in the beginning i was like i i, I just i, I want to help him Right. Right. But then I started to be made aware of so many other injustices. I'm I'm literally sitting on the floor so that I can plug in this charger. So excuse my position. The real one. Hold on, let me fix it. Real one. Okay. Real so one. I um I literally had to like immerse myself in all the different things that were happening. And I was like, wait a minute, there are people really going through it out here and I have a voice and I have a platform. Right. Nah, I'm using my platform for some good because the same way that I would want somebody to help me mm -hmm. is the same way that I'm gonna get out there and help somebody else, whether it affects my home or not. Right. And then that just opened my eyes to so many other things and I was like, I gotta be involved. Mm -hmm. Because I never really wanted to be on, I, wa I never wanted to be famous. Right. I felt like God gave me this platform so that I could use it to do good and I might as well try my best to do good. No, definitely, definitely. And it, it, it also just seems like, you know, with all the causes that I've just seen you be a part of, you're so passionate about it. You know what I'm saying? It's not someone who's just going out there to, on a whim, like, oh, you know, I'm gonna do this because I think this is the right thing. No, I feel like you really believe, like, this is what I believe, like, y'all are tripping. Yeah. Like, this, this is crazy. Yeah. Like, I yeah. truly, my soul feel like this is like completely, terrible like I, I remember on a season you guys i believe you went down um i forgot what state it was and you guys were arrested and just a whole mm -hmm. bunch of stuff or maybe not even arrested held or something like yeah. that like yeah. so i've that been arrested a couple times now um so i'm not sure which which thing that was but i was arrested in kentucky yeah um fighting for brianna yeah. taylor yeah um for sure wrong yeah. so now the thing about that is um I didn't know Brianna Taylor. I didn't know her family. However, I have definitely had the authorities come to my house. Right. I definitely have um, been a woman that have been tied to things that I that I had nothing to do with. Right. So in that instance, again, I put myself in her shoes, right. and I'm like, that could have been me. Yeah. And I would have wanted somebody to stand up for me. I would have wanted, God forbid, I would have lost my life right. when they came to my house. I would have wanted somebody fighting like Yandy did not deserve to die. Right. Not like this. Right. I would have wanted somebody on a bullhorn saying, "Let's, we got to fight for her. Right. These officers have to No, the wall that got hit with bullets is not more important than that black woman that, that died. No, absolutely not. Right. 
And what are like your conversations with your children? Because I know you're a boy mom as well. And, you know, that's kind of something that's kind of scary as well. I'm, I only have two girls, so I can only imagine. But what are those type of conversations? Is that something that you guys, you women in D.C. Yeah. have to really sit down and like. Absolutely. Okay, Y'all need Absolutely. to relax. Get pulled over. Relax. A Absolutely. These are conversations that we, Little Miss DC is our only baby that drives mm -hmm. right now, but we've had these conversations with all the boys. My sons know we get pulled over even if you're in the back seat. Mm -hmm. Roll down your windows. Mm -hmm. Keep your hands, at, you know, Little Miss DC, make sure you keep your hands on the steering wheel. Right. Make sure you speak politely. Right. You know, if you're asked to get out the car, get out the car. Mm -hmm. You're more than welcome to say, let me get my attorney involved. Let me call my parents. Right. And that's because you might be, you might have every right to say, why are you pulling me over? Right. What right. is it? And, and I want you to come home. Right. I want the goal to be you to come home. Mm -hmm. So if we find out later why you got pulled over, we'll find out later. Yeah. The goal is for you to come home. Yeah. The goal is for you to get out of that alive. Right. Period. Point blank. Yeah. We could find out why. Mm -hmm. We could go to court. We could do all the things. Mm -hmm. But get home. Right. And I think that's actually dope because especially in you guys' position where you know, you could you could get the top notch lawyer. You know what I'm saying? The point of the matter is be safe and then we'll revisit why they even did this. It doesn't matter. Place. matter. Look at the football player that was just yanked out of his, you know, five hundred thousand yep. dollar car. Right? Yep. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. These over aggressive, super power warranted officers, they don't care. Yeah. They want to make their point. And sometimes you might get home, but you might get home with a black eye. You might get home with broken legs, broken spine. I don't got the time for that for my child. Yeah. I just don't. Yeah. But best believe I'm going to fight to my dying breath to make sure your voice is heard and justice is served every time when it comes to anything of mine. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like sometimes we got to step out for the people we care about, for our community, and just for for the better sake of this world right like we don't live in this world by ourselves right so we can't operate in a space where i only care about mine i only care about my family i only care because ultimately that same child that's your neighbor or that goes to school with your child is going to bleed into your backyard yeah you know what I'm saying? there's been 46 school shootings this year alone and this year is nowhere near over. Yeah. So when you be like, oh, I got to take care of mine. I got to make sure. No, 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 no. Your community matters as well. You got to make sure these kids in your community are mentally right. Right. And they okay. Because you never know when your child is going to be a victim or your wife that works in the school, mm -hmm. right, that's the teacher, that's the principal, will be a victim of somebody that wasn't taken care of when you could have, you could have stopped it just by asking that parent like hey do you need some more resources for your kid yeah hey listen i got this tutor that comes over or hey i got this mental health specialist that works up the block she's free she does therapy for freely or whatever i got this grant with this pro we got to take care of each definitely. other we have to definitely with this uh presidential election coming up what are your thoughts on vice president kamala harris and how this is major for women in general um i feel like it's a make or break type of situation that we're in um, and just being like the first black woman to potentially really be the first president, you know, of our yeah. How, what are your thoughts in regards to that? You know, at first I was really, really scared. Um, I, and I was scared because I felt like the powers that be would never let a black woman, mm -hmm. right, be, have the highest position. Mm -hmm. And then. I got on a call, went with black woman, mm -hmm. um, that I think over 45,000 of us were on that call. Mm -hmm. And then I felt so powerful. Right. I felt so enlightened and I felt empowered to make sure that I don't take the seat, this, the, the seat in the back, to make sure I don't um, let fear overtake um, the possibility of what can happen. Yeah. And I decided that I was going to get on the forefront and fight for, you know, who can do the job? I think, you know, when you look at Kamala's history from, you know, U.S. attorney, a senator, vice president, there's no one that's been better yeah. than her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Forget if she, if she take away the fact that she's a woman. Mm -hmm. Right. There's no one that's been better than her. But let's add the fact that she's also a woman. Yeah. We get the job done. Yeah. We're tired. Yeah. But since 1619, Black women have gotten the job done. Yeah. We've done it. Mm -hmm. We've been at the forefront, at the forefront of every huge major fight this country has ever had. Exactly. It's been Black women leading the way. Exactly. So, 
why can't she do it? Right. She she has everything on her resume checked out as to why she could. Yeah. So, you know, I don't I don't understand. District lawyer, district attorney, U.S. attorney, um, senator, vice president. Am I missing anything? No. Did I add anything? Because I'm not the best. Yeah. Did I add anything to her resume that's not the truth? No. It's, it's, it's the, the truth. It's the truth. I don't know of anybody else running for the presidential candidacy that has any of those things on their resume. Right. right. I don't. I just, just don't. I don't know anybody else that has that. Has that. Right. Definitely. So Definitely. I feel like she's more than qualified. So my fear turned into my fight. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, we got to get out there. And if that means, which I've done, knocking on doors and some of, you know, some of these areas that people feel like they don't come out and vote, yeah. that, you know, they don't have a voice. We trying to go to all those places, exactly. all those places. Now we weren't met with people with open arms that are like, yes, I want to vote. This, okay. Register me. Yeah. No, we, most, the majority of people that we were met with are like, nothing changes for me. Mm -hmm. Nothing changes. Nothing ever happens. Right. My grandparents were poor. My mom's poor. I'm poor. The right. schools are bad. You know, my house is falling apart. I pay taxes, nothing happened. We were met with so many people that we had to really have real conversations with. And I welcomed them. I'm not an expert in this. And I, I never I never pretend or act like I'm an expert in this. But I got a few friends that mm -hmm. are experts and that are really smart. I had them out there with me. Hey, sis, come over here. Let's talk to Miss Brown. Mm -hmm. Mr. Adams got some questions. I need your help with this because I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how to answer what's going to change for him. Right. But I do know the possibilities of what can change if other people are in, uh, in office. Right. I right. do know the opportunities that will be taken away. Right. Right. You know. I definitely agree. Yeah, I definitely agree. I, I think for me personally, uh, my grandfather was heavily in the Civil Rights Act and he came from Grenada, Mississippi, up into Minnesota, where we're from. And um, it's it's. For me, to in my head, it's like, well, he literally walked for this. Like, they literally yes. were getting, not getting on buses. Like, and maybe because I just heard these stories all my life, and it was ingrained in my head that it's so important to use these use these resources that people fought for, literally fought for, for us to be able to have, um, you know, be together, not not separation, not segregation, voting rights, and just everything that comes along with it. So, you know, sometimes yes. it's kind of cringy. You know, to hear when people say like, well, my vote doesn't matter. And well, I wish I could see you back in 1960, 1970. Exactly. And, and guess what? If your, boy didn't, if your voice didn't matter and your vote didn't matter, why are they going through these extreme measures to suppress it? Right. Why, why, why are they saying, oh, you can't hand out water online? Mm -hmm. Why are they saying, like, even in, originally what I wanted to do, I did yell for the culture this year and it was um, in partnership with Hip Hop to Vote. And I'm like, my, me not knowing the law i'm like every single person that registers to vote i'm going to give them free food at the restaurant right and they're like nope can't do it uh -huh. and i'm like what do you mean they're like that is illegal in atlanta wow i was like it's illegal to all they're like yep anything in exchange for uh -huh. voter registration is illegal wow i was like what wow i didn't know that you that's just educated me but, but that's not everywhere that's in yeah. atlanta yeah. Right. And in, in certain swing states, they're making it very hard for it. They don't want you to register to vote. Right. They don't want you to have a place. They don't want people in some of these communities that can really shift mm -hmm. the, the vote swing. They don't want you. They want you to think there's nothing going to happen for you. They don't want you to get rewarded for using your voice. In my household, let me say something. My son went through something at school and he was like, Mom, I'm using my voice. I'm standing up because I, this is not right. Mm -hmm. We rewarded him. Mm -hmm. I rewarded him just for using his voice. I went into the school and I had his back. Like, look, my son said this. this. So I personally feel like when you decide to use your voice and you put power back into your community, into your household, you should be rewarded. If I have the resources to reward you, exactly. it is illegal. Yeah, that's crazy. That's that's literally, literally crazy. Um, so I know, like I said, you have you have such a busy day and so many things going ahead. I always like to um, ask whomever I'm interviewing, what advice do you give to those who may want to walk in similar footsteps or may want to, you know, just be a voice in their community, whether or not that's their community or want to get into the entertainment business? What keeps you going as an individual daily throughout your journey? 
Um, I think it's all about my motivation and my purpose. And I think once you figure out, and this is to, to whomever is listening, right? What is your purpose? What do you want when it's all said and done? What is the legacy that you want to leave behind that you want people to remember you for? Right. right? And I think for me, um, it's always been like, I, I want to be known as a person that cared about my community. I want to be a person that cared for not just the outside but also the inner being the inner person like is your soul right right, right? i'm that person that i'm a girl girl i'm gonna be your friend to the end um and i'm going i, I don't like to just walk away i want to fight for my friendship i want to fight for my community and i think you know god forbid my last day comes soon but on my last day i want people to stand up and say yandy fought for her community right. yandy fought for this relationship you know me and her went through this but we fought through this because when I love, I love hard and I want to make sure that I'm walking constantly in the purpose for my people. Right. I want to make sure that I, I, if I'm able to create a business, I want to hire people that normally won't be able to get the job. Yeah. I want to know that you're smart. Mm -hmm. I want to know that you are loyal. I want to know that you are willing to learn and everything else can come later. Mm -hmm. But for me, those things are important. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know. And I'm going to make sure I supply an opportunity for you. Yeah. I want to be known as an opportunity giver. I want to be known as an amplifier of marginalized voices. Right. And I think that when you know that that is your purpose, everything you start to do will align with that. Right. right? So when I create a business, I want to hire certain people. I want to make sure that I'm providing opportunities for these types of people that might not all, or always get the opportunity. Yeah. When I am on a, even on, on my show, right? Some people are like, oh, that is the demise of the black man. That is mm -hmm. the demise of... It may very well be to you, mm -hmm. but when Yandy steps on the scene, Yandy is making sure that 70% of what she's a part of and what she's doing is pushing the culture and pushing the community forward. Mm -hmm. Now, I might get caught up, and this is in my real life, I might get caught up in some nonsense here and there, but that's with or without a camera. Mm -hmm. But 70% of what I'm trying to do in my real life and in my TV life is push the culture forward. Right. I'm trying to build a legacy. I'm trying to make my children proud. I'm trying to make my mother and my father proud. Right. And um, that's what I do on and off camera. Yeah. Well, y'all, y'all got some free game. I hope I hope everybody retain this because I'm over here like, Yandy, I could go for another two, three hours, girl. I I say, I are, I'm like, are we brain. done? I want to pick your brain. I wanted to pick your brain. But like I said, we here at Lit Live, I appreciate you. We love you. We appreciate everything that you bring to the Aww, community. I love you. And I love this interview. When we when we done, make sure your people get my number so you can call me okay. anytime and we can talk okay. further. I, I'm sure there's a world where we can do some stuff together. Yeah. Oh, yes. Definitely. I would I would love to. I was so disappointed I couldn't come to your event this past weekend. We were we were booked over at Revolt World, but I Okay. Yeah, when I was speaking to everyone, I'm like, I know they're they are doing some powerful things over there, some powerful things over there. It was great. It was so good. But we'll do we'll do it again. I'm trying to do another Yell for the Culture at the end of October. Yeah. Um, because now that you know We've gotten a lot of people registered to vote. It's also about making sure they show up to the polls. Period. Um, so I'm trying to do some activations all around different cities to make sure people understand why their vote is important. Definitely. You know? Definitely. definitely. We'll so we'll see. We'll connect for sure no, we'll because I definitely know that we can share each other's platforms to amplify definitely. some of the same sentiments. Definitely. Definitely. Well, we appreciate you and I hope you have a blessed rest of your day. Thank you so much. My daughter is begging to say bye to you. Go ahead. You can say bye. Bye. Oh, one. oh my goodness. I just love you. You are so beautiful. You are so Did you beautiful, do Queen. Makeup for this? I'm yes, like, why do I see a sparkle in your eyes? Yes, mom, period. Uh huh. I came through with the come through. Exactly. <laughs> All right, baby girl. Go ahead. Yeah. Go back to work. Go finish working. Thank you. Oh, yeah. These kids are out. They're not supposed to be out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. See you later, mamas. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Bye-bye.